All right, all right. Welcome to another episode of The Close-Up, a part of the Orlando Magic HQ Network. I'm your host, Stephen Cameron, and today is a very fun, special episode. We're doing a little one-off today because we have ex-Orlando Magic beat reporter Kobe Price in the house tonight. He he joins us as the Magic based the Lakers at Amway, which is really fun. Um, tomorrow, the teams right now are both going into this matchup three and two. So one of our teams will be going home or, or finishing this game four and two, which is really exciting. Um, yeah, it was really good to catch up with Kobe. It was a short time. We, we chatted for about 30 minutes. This isn't going to be the longest episode in the world. I'm giving you a little bit of a preview of the Lakers matchup, uh, Lakers magic matchup. We also talk a little bit about Kobe, kind of how he's getting settled in with the Lakers and like some differences for him covering a team like the Magic, which had up and coming, uh, you know, team rookie of the year when he was covering them. Now covering a team like the Lakers, huge spotlight on them on a on a big basis and needing to you know cover a player like LeBron and stuff like that. So it's a really fun, insightful conversation. I think y'all are going to enjoy it. Kobe's great, man. Like Jason's doing an awesome job covering his spot at at um you know orlando sentinel um i wish there was space for both of them but but you know obviously kobe's doing some really great things out in la and and taking some really good steps for his career so more power to him um this episode is brought to you by bet online the last of the major pro sport leagues is off and rolling with college basketball and it's ready is ready to go as well bet online remains your top spot for all your live betting actions and contests so if you want to bet that the Orlando Magic are going to whoop up on them Lakers, Bet Online is your place to go. Just go to Bet Online and, and place your wagers. You can do it. You can you can make that money. You can you can get them bags. Right? Um, NFL, college football, UFC, and NHL are all in full swing. So is the NBA. Um, Bet Online is your number one spot for wagering, news, odds, trends, and predictions. All the hoops betting action along with every t- every sport available at your fingertips with both desktop and mobile access anytime. Head to Bet Online today and remember to use code Believe. That's B L E A V. B L E A V. That's the promo code for your 50% off your welcome bonus on your first deposit. So again, first deposit, believe gives you 50% welcome bonus i think that means if you deposit a hundred bucks you're gonna get another 50 as a welcome bonus so that's 50 percent of 100 in your account to go gamble with and go make some cash hit the over on the magic season total all right um again bet online where the game starts all right magic fans we don't we don't got to go on too much longer the Magic just beat the Jazz, ending their four-game road trip. Paulo went off for 30. Really fun and exciting game for him. It was smooth. It was effortlessly, like, super efficient. It wasn't effortlessly. You know, he tried real hard to get there. But it's like he found his groove again. Um, some bad news. Wendell Carter broke his hand going up for a massive rebound in the last seconds as we wrapped up the game. He's going to be out for a while. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe the news has come out while I'm recording this. but. That's probably going to be a few weeks to maybe a month-ish. Um, that typically takes a little while. He's got one of his things have broken. Um, yeah, you know, Gary Harris had a sore quad um, and didn't play the second half. Hopefully it's just some management. He'll be back tomorrow, hopefully. I'm not sure. Um, Volts didn't play in this game either. He had a swollen knee. I'm really not too concerned about that. I imagine he'll play, um, you know, on Saturday. So it'll be fun. We ended up that road trip going two and two, which is awesome. Um, and since we got the W versus the Rockets, the home opener, that leads us at three and two right now, above 500 record. Um, you know, no matter what happens on Saturday, we're either going to be three and three, which is 500, or four and two, which I would love even more. So we'll see. Big things happening, guys. Um, enjoy the conversation. Let's get it. Let's go, Magic. All right, everyone. Like I said in the intro, we got. Magic, magic, part of us. He might have left, but he's really a part of 
part of us. We got we got Kobe Price in the building. What's going on, Kobe? How you doing, man? What up, man? I'm good. How you feeling? Dude, I'm good. It's Friday. Uh, you know, beautiful day outside here in sunny California. Probably feeling the same over there in uh in Florida. Um Yo, you and I like we kind of switched spots. You came back to Florida. I'm I'm in California. Like we, I guess we could have just traded jobs for a little bit. <laughs> um, man, first off, welcome back, man. It's good to have you back on the podcast. Um, you know, it's la- last time we spoke was you were a Magic Orlando, you were an Orlando Magic Orlando Sentinel reporter, and and now you are with the Los Angeles Lakers. Let's before we get into like the Magic Lakers game coming up tomorrow or today for the fans that are listening to the show. Um, let's just tap in, man. How you doing? How's your transition to LA going for you? Um, yeah, man. How's LA? Is, is that lifestyle for you versus the lifestyle in Orlando? Or do you kind of prefer getting back into Orlando? What you thinking? Uh, lifestyle wise, I can do either or. They both come with their benefits and drawbacks, if you want to say a phrase it like that. Sure. But I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm enjoying the transition. I'm enjoying, you know, the season actually starting, it was kind of a weird time when I jumped in just because my last day in Orlando was the night of the draft. And then my first day in LA was the Tuesday before free agency started. I think maybe that Friday or Thursday, whatever that day was. So it was a weird spot to like the first two, three weeks were just ridiculous. And then after summer league, it just died down so quickly. So it's honestly been great more than anything to actually just get the season started back up. What uh, Saturday's game is going to be the sixth game for the Lakers. I think it's also going to be the sixth game for the Magic as well. So it's just been good to actually get a regular season NBA basketball back and just seeing what the Lakers look like outside of theory. I always say that in training camp, everything sounds great in theory. Everything sounds awesome. And it's like, okay, let's actually apply this in real time, in a real game. And then, you know, some things work out, some things don't, and you have to tweak, uh, whether it's make adjustments, whatever it may be. So for me, it's just been good to actually get the games back and being able to go about it that way. No, man, I feel that like, you know, again, it's in theory conversation. What are these lineups like? What, how are they going to respond to certain situations on the court? And now we're actually like collecting data, early data, you know, small sample sizes, everyone says, but we're, we're collecting that information and able to, you know, start seeing results on, on the floor and, and allowing these guys and players to, to to just do what they need to do. Um kind of still like role talking talking more about you, not so much about the teams yet. What's been a different like you you covered the magic, smaller market team. Granted, some fun stuff going on. You got to cover the rookie of the year. Um, you know, really generational you know that we feel like type of player exciting in Paulo and really smart high-end player in Franz um to now covering the most talked about team in the NBA um the someone who's got you know a, a team with LeBron James like you got fucking LeBron James you know like <laughs> let's just be real like yeah. that dude's a beast he's a monster uh he, not just on the court but off the court media wise um, one of the most important people to ever play the game of basketball and, 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 and whatnot. How is, what are sort of the differences within your role and how you cover a team when it comes to um, Orlando versus the Lakers? Uh, I mean, for me, you know, either, so I guess from the outside, yeah, this, this is a different level of attention just when you do have a player like LeBron James on the team. And that is almost, I forget, um, I think it might have been Darvin Ham referred to as like when we were, it was in the before around the game, the Lakers Kings game. Um, and he, we were just talking about, you know, that was the 20th anniversary of LeBron, you know, making his debut and just how, you know, as great as the expectations were of him, you know, coming into the league, he somehow find a way not to just meet them, but also exceed them. And he's sure. created this like LeBron James world along the way. So, you know, not being quote unquote inside of it in that sense, but just being, I guess, around it more, um, just in terms of the job, that's been something that's eye opening, to be honest with you. Just seeing like that magnitude of star power, star player, um, and just the outside attention that comes with, whether it's in a press conference, whether it's in, you know, how the media handles things um, regarding coverage of the Braun. Uh, seems like everything he's, every sentence he says is some kind of story. Uh, that you could read about just any, any, anything. Um, it's honestly fascinating to see. 
but it's just that's probably the biggest thing just the outside attention um in terms of me i guess in my role i don't it's i i guess this is more reflective how i try to uh how i try to approach the magic beat reporter role it doesn't really feel like a whole lot different in terms of how i approach for the lakers beat role or beat reporter role it's more so just different nuances but my my like my approach is still very similar maybe i like um find like a little bit more of like something a niche to to get into um and just working on you know six games and working on that but in terms of like how i approach it it still feels fairly similar to how i approached things in orlando more or less maybe with like a couple tweaks here and there with some small details but not like these grand uh grand adjustments that makes sense that makes sense um when it comes to like navigating Team politics. I mean, you you, you worked, um, you know, covering uh, under under John Hammond and Jeff Weltman, and sort of how they like to um, present themselves and have the team present themselves with, within the media. Um, sometimes things were a little bit closed doored. Sometimes things were felt scripted, particularly when you asked about like certain injuries and stuff like that. It, it might have loosened up a little bit towards the end, but that's kind of how it can feel sometimes from like from fandom and stuff like that. Now you're now you're working with, with Rob Palenka and a whole other front office and, and coaching staff. Have there been have you felt differences in communication styles between one or another? Not necessarily that one is better than the other, but just like or is it kind of like status quo how like uh ah, this front office is communicating the same way as like the magic did and it's sort of like just like a normalcy within the the NBA? I would, I would say it's too early to tell sure. just because, like I said, just also the time of when I, I joined, like there hasn't been a whole lot of those situations that you're describing so right. far. Right. Um, just because what has been two weeks, you know, we're, we're about to finish the second week of the season and there hasn't been That's a fair. whole, like, there's been a fair amount, like in terms of injuries, I guess on the Lakers side, there's been a fair amount of injuries so far, um, but they've been up to this point pretty... Um, you know, I guess transparent in that sense, in terms of like, all right, we're going to reevaluate this guy in two weeks. Yeah. Um, which I tell people, like, for me, it's like, all right, I mean, I may ask like an update in them, but at least I know from that standpoint of, all right, like this person's going to be out for two weeks, two weeks essentially. So too early to tell. Um, but yeah, I mean, well, I guess it's one of those we'll see as the season goes on, like how the external communication is handled uh, in that sense. Totally. Yeah. And I'm sure it'll get, get a little bit you know, different when you get to like trade rumor season, when, when things are picking up closer to the deadline, that makes a lot of sense. Well, man, that's exciting. I know, um, you know, us magic fans and, and people that cover the team, uh, we loved having you around the last couple seasons. Um, you know, Jason's doing a great job kind of filling in where you left off, but, but, you know, we definitely miss, miss you and, and having you around. So it's great to kind of get you back over here. Um, and you know, I'm like I said, I'm sure Magic fans are are psyched to have have an opportunity to like listen to hear your thoughts today as as we talk about you know the team and the and the Lakers and the Magic. Before we kind of get in, what kind of did well, the Magic made some moves? You know, this summer, nothing too crazy, splashy. They used both their draft picks with Anthony Black and Jed Howard, brought in Joe Ingles. So the way the Magic kind of operated their off season is that sort of what you were expecting as you were kind of leaving, or did you kind of expect something different well, overall what are your thoughts about the magic kind of ending last season and coming into this season and where we're at now yeah going into the summer just talking with people about the team nobody i spoke with and even my own like uh nobody i spoke with and just my own uh not assumptions but my own uh, thoughts on it just based off of information was that they weren't going to make a whole lot of splashy moves you know, they're they're they everything I gathered about the team was that they were prioritizing building things organically. Yeah. And that was gonna be shown in the terms of the moves they made uh during the summer. Now I'm not saying I saw them signing Joe Ingles. It's not specifically like, oh, I saw them drafting this these players or signing this guy or not signing this guy or whatever, but just the approach of, yeah, we're gonna continue to um build things organically. We're gonna continue to leave a pathway for the players that are already on the team to develop and push this team forward to a different level. Yeah, that was, I mean, honestly, they even set as much throughout last season and even going into um, 
going into the summer. So as you know, I know, uh, uh, what's the, what's am I trying to say? I know there's a lot of uh, skepticism about how transparent they can be, but they've been very forthcoming in terms of like, we want to build this organically. Um, and we want to push this forward and allow the guys that are here to be the reason why we continue to get better. Um, them being the magic, they being the magic. Um, but you know, how long that lasts for, I mean, I think this is going to be a pivotal year, pivotal year for them in terms of figuring out you know, these guys or these who's really a part of the core of this group is going to help yeah. push it forward because every single, you know, it's very rare that, you know, when you're in the early stages of building the, rebuilding the team or building the team back out that, you know, the seven or eight rotation, like, or six to eight rotation players from, you know, one team is the same team rotation players that you have two years down the line, two years down the line. Whether it's performance related, in, uh, performance related, contract related, there are typically some sort of changes. But I think this year is pivotal just to show, all right, who are, you know, who are those players that will uh, be here for the long haul? And by long haul, I mean you know, three years down the line, maybe five years down the line. I will not say seven years down the line because it's the NBA and anything things past five years fast. to me. Yeah, there's if if there yeah things move too fast. Uh, Projecting things seven years out does not always feel like the smartest move, but yeah. for them, it, it seemed clear that they were going to take a more uh, continue to be patient with their approach with uh, with building, you know, rebuilding the team back. Out. Honestly, not even just rebuilding; like it seemed like they've rebuilt it now, just building it further, like like just kind of like yeah. a building. You the foundation tore it down, has been laid. It. yeah, and just how, and I build it back up. See how far that foundation will take you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, now I mean, I I agree. I. I was kind of hoping they do a little bit of different things with with the with the draft situation. Like I, I wasn't necessarily all for like using both draft picks. I kind of wanted to, you know, do some other things with with one of the picks or both of them to an extent. But um, you know, it, it wasn't surprising that they used both of them. Um, and you know, kick the can down the road with the second round pick. Um, that's just kind of like the mo of this front office, which is fine. Um. Yeah, man. So that's cool. Yeah, you're you're right. Like they're using this season as a team to like you know another year to like find out what they got. You know they they've set the pressure to play competitive basketball. They the whole team is talking playoffs. That seems to be the expectation for them. Um, and and now you know when they go up versus the Lakers, there's different expectations. You know when they hit those types of teams, like we want to see them competing at a high level, and you know taking some w's right you know and 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 or 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 you know showing good fights to you know beat the teams they're supposed to beat and you know show good fight and even win some against teams that that are maybe in the the weight class above them and to yeah you know i'll say the lakers are definitely a weight class above the magic right now right they have two of two top 10 players in the league right now with uh you know lebron james and, and anthony davis you know top 10 ish people i'm sure someone's gonna yell at me for saying someone is not you know they're they're actually the top 12 whatever they have two of the top guys in the league they got a you know they they have a, a pretty deep bench um you know definitely a different team than they had last year healthier team so far um early thoughts right how how far do you think like do you view this lakers team as as a top team in the west that can make a a run to the to the finals um, or have a deep playoff run? Um, do you think they're still, like, a couple moves away? Like, what are your thoughts just on this Lakers team? We, we've we seen them once already. We saw them on, um, oh, God, what day was that? I think that was uh, Tuesday. Monday. We saw Monday? Um, yeah, we saw them earlier this week. I forget the date of it, but it was earlier this Monday. week. Monday. Monday, yeah. And it was a close game, you know? The, the Magic were in it with the Lakers the whole time. D'Angelo Russell went off. The the guards could not seem to slow him down. Um, but you know they 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 you know they but they couldn't really score that slow down Gary Harris much, who had like a perfect shooting night, five for five, four for four from three. Um, and it was just like a really good matchup. We we brought it down to the wire with eight seconds left, down by three. We couldn't close out the game or bring it to overtime to um, you know connect that that last eight seconds. But like. How do you view this Lakers team and, and, you know, kind of where their goals are for this act compared to the Magic? Yeah, I mean, you, you compare them, you know, even though I think they both have three and two records going into tomorrow. 
you know, I, I think the expectation, you know, just being honest and fair, like the expectation for the Lakers is higher than the Magic, as it should totally. be. Yeah. You know, the Lakers are expected to compete for NBA championship. The the Magic are hoping or expecting to make the playoffs. You know, the level, but the levels between that are um, quite different. Um, but with the Lakers, I do see them as a team. To me, in the West, I look at it look at it as you know, defending champion Denver Nuggets. To me, they're the top dog until someone knocks them off, right. or unless they just have a poor regular season that reflects being a level or two below where they were at last season. Just especially with the way that they marched through the playoffs. What was it? A sixteen and four record um, in the playoffs uh, on the way to the winning the title. So you have the Nuggets, and then after that, you have this cluster of the Warriors, the Clippers, the Lakers. Uh, you know, these the bunch of different teams. Phoenix. I know the Pelican Phoenix, yeah, even though they've had a slow start. You know, you could and I, I know Dallas and New Orleans have had a strong start to the season. You know, this is a, I don't know if I would put Dallas in, or Dallas or um the Mavericks in that group, but you could definitely throw, you know, this jumble of six, five to six teams in the West where if you told me it's Denver versus Clippers, Warriors, Lakers go down the line in the Western Conference Finals. I wouldn't be surprised. Or if you told me one of those, you know, Lakers, Clippers, Warriors, ex- you know, whoever, not the Den- not Denver out in the second round or even at conference finals, I wouldn't be, you know, I would expect Denver to win those that series, but I wouldn't be shocked. There are a lot of different teams in the West. You know, everybody talks about the parity, this, the parity, that. There's a lot of different teams in the West that you could tell me would make it to the conference finals. And once you get that far, I could definitely see you making it, you know, to the finals. And the Lakers are one of those teams. I think that, you know, it hasn't been, you know, a perfect start by any means, but they've they've definitely shown some good flashes of just playing good basketball. And I think they're figuring things out. The injuries have started to, you know, come up here and there, like I know they have for the Magic as well. But I think there's a there's a team in here that can compete for it, uh compete for a spot in the finals. Now whether they find that team or that team's revealed that the course of the regular season or the playoffs remains to be seen, but there is a team in there that I could see, uh, you know, competing for a spot in the Western Conference Finals. I mean, you got LeBron James. Any teams that has him, even at thirty nine or however old he is, ancient man, still like <laughs> dominating. Uh, you know, averaging whatever something ridiculous. He's playing like a madman right now. It's pretty awesome to see. Um, man, let's let's get into this matchup tomorrow. So like, we got the Lakers versus the Magic. And it's in Amway. Both teams are three and two. Um, both teams are kind of figuring themselves out a little bit. You know, it took Paulo a hot, a hot minute to kind of find himself, where last night he had a really smooth game to 30 versus the Jazz. Um, you know, Magic lose some key players last night. Um, you know, it's unknown about the status of Gary Harris and Markel Fultz for tomorrow, at least as of now, from what I've seen in check. Maybe something's come out in the last hour that I haven't seen. Um, we know Wendell Carter's got a broken hand. He's going to be out for a few weeks, probably, you know, maybe a month-ish. Um, so there, there are some changes from what we saw earlier this week to what we're going to see tomorrow in Amway Center um, or today. I'm not sure exactly when this podcast is coming out. So sorry, <laughs> listeners, if, if I'm saying tomorrow and you're listening to it on Saturday morning, um, it might come out later today. I don't know. So, um, you know, we, we have some, a couple of things that have changed, but we also have some teams that are starting to find a little bit more about themselves and their identity offensively. Um, you know, with the magic, with Apollo going off, you know, again, for 30, kind of like getting his confidence last night, I think, and kind of like starting to find that balance with his, his shooting and aggressiveness. You know, Franz has had a really nice start to the year. Um, still there with, with the, reduction of Wendell Carter do you think the Lakers are going to really focus a lot of attention on Anthony Davis on the offensive side or do you think that's still going to kind of be more of like um, a balance between who's hot with like D'Lo potentially going you know getting going again or or do you think their offensive system is going to change at all I guess with with the fact that Wendell Carter has has dropped out of you know the, the rotation Mm, I would expect too much. I mean, I know, I, I know they're trying to emphasize. I, I think, regardless of the matchup, they're trying to make sure that they keep AD involved in the offensive game plan. Regardless, you know, um, just because in that first game against Denver, you know, I, I think Denver did a good job of 
making it hard for the Lakers to get AD involved in spots that he's comfortable. And then he also just missed shots that he would, you know, could make. I think he went 0 for 6 in the second half versus Denver. Maybe they maybe could have gone 2 for 6, 8, or yeah, 2 for 6 if he made shots that he normally would make. But since then, they've really kept him involved. Um, I, th- I forget which game it was, and whether it's against the Magic or even, um, yeah, I think it was against the Magic. They, you know, keeping him involved in um, different kind of sets, keeping him involved just movement wise offensively. And yeah, you know, if Wendell's not guarding him, um, you know, because he's out. I would imagine they'll be push that button even more, especially yeah. with the role that AD's been on the past few games. I think he's averaged something like 20. Shoot, I, I don't even remember. I'll bring you back the numbers up later, but it's been something ridiculous the past few games uh, since he the season opener. He's versus us, you know, so. Yeah, he's he, been he, rolling. We had Wendell, and that didn't really seem to stop him much anyway, so it's okay. Yeah, um, AD's been rolling. He's been, uh, I mean, since the season opener, it's been 30, 30, 26, and 27. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, Pretty you know, cool. getting the rebounds, blocks, like he's been, I mean, he's just been dominant. So I don't, like I said, I don't feel like they're going to do anything differently because they've already been in the motion of like, let's keep AD involved. You know, he is, you know, the reality is LeBron James is two months away or a month and a half away from ter- ter- uh, turning 39 years old. You know, we can't, you know, you don't just put the ball in his hands all game and just right. rely on him all game. You know, there's going to be a sprinkle of D'Lo, Austin Reeves, you know, but it, a lot of it's going to revolve around AD, um, get the guards, you know, getting him involved, the ball handlers getting him involved. But a lot of it is going to center around, you know, his role gravity, um, his post-ups, um, and his just ability to suck in the defense, uh, you know, when he's in the paint or towards the middle. So that's not going to change. And I, at least I wouldn't expect it to change, you know, with Wendell being out uh, for Saturday's game. You know, I'm wondering with the Magic right now, given the situation that they're in, um, you know, coming home, uh, Jonathan Isaac has been pretty healthy. They've managed him a little bit. They didn't let him play on the back-to-back, um, you know, versus the Clippers after they played the Lakers. I'm wondering if this is the game where we see him play his most minutes, you know, push to 20, low 20s. Uh, they probably won't match him as a starter minute, but I wonder if, like, they throw him as the starting five next to Paulo and have him go up versus AD, or maybe he's like one of the first guys off the bench to kind of like, you know, give AD some defensive problems because he's probably the only person on this team that has a chance of slowing down Anthony Davis, in my opinion. Um, you know, uh, Mo Wagner has been a better defender this year, but he's still, he's not really a defensive threat. Um, you know, Goga is, is in theory a, a pretty decent defender, but haven't really seen him play much this year to know how he's looking and stuff like that. You know, I had a decent Biba run, so it'd be interesting to see how they use utilize Jonathan Isaac versus Anthony Davis, um, if that's the route they decide to go positionally. Now, man, what do you think the Magic have to do to slow down? Um, you're good. You need to get that? Okay, cool. Um, what do you think the Magic have to do to slow down D'Angelo Russell? Because last time, you know, we had Suggs and Fultz out there, and he had a heyday. Um, what What do you think was made him so successful during that game that that the Magic might need to do to do like to just control that a little bit better? Yeah, I think for. You know, I guess I'll approach it from the Lakers side first and then yeah, totally. uh, approach it to the, from the Magic side. For D'Lo, for D'Angelo, that was really, I think, his first, you know, he had, had a couple of or a few just not typical shoot performances for him uh, leading into that game. So for, for D'Lo, that was like his, like, all right, he's starting to get the ball rolling and he even had another good, uh, really good game uh, against the Clippers. Uh, I think that was on Wednesday. So for him, I mean, it's very much like he, between him and Austin, you know, I think what the Lakers are looking for are for those two to really, you know, keep the offense afloat, um, even when LeBron's in the game, uh, especially when LeBron's out of the game, but even when LeBron's in the game, just like I said, not to put too much, uh, put too much, uh, what do you want to call it, strain or uh, responsibilities in his hands. Like Spark Darvin spoken about this, you know, they want to, you know, they're trying to, you know, keep the offense spread out in the sense of like, 
you know, it's not just going to be someone dominating the ball for 95, 95% possession. It's going to be, sure. you know, everybody gets involved. So for the magic, it's about, you know, staying attached, you know, on D those pick and rolls. Don't lose sight of, you know, don't help off of him too much off ball because he's, he can be a very effective, not can be, like he's a very effective uh, catch and shoot three point shooter. So staying attached on those pick and rolls, st- you know, trying to stay on his hip. He can get you with the little, you know, a little shoulder shrug. He's a little stronger than maybe he was the pe- previous few seasons. So, I think for Mark, you know, I don't know what Markel status is going to be, um, but whether it's Markel, Jalen, you know, if Anthony Black gets those minutes um, or gets more minutes, Gary, Cole, like just staying attached on the pick and rolls, which is a much harder thing to do than it, it is to say. Um, yeah. And then just being mindful of where he is because, you know, the Lakers, the one thing the Lakers do have, they have a lot of good passers throughout the lineup, including in the front court. Um, Jackson Hayes is impressed in that regard. Christian Woods is a very capable passer. AD is a good passer. LeBron's obviously LeBron. Um, so those swing passes can happen so quickly. So if you, you know, you lose focus for a second and Delos freed up, then that can, that, you know, that second of just being open can get him rolling. And it seems like with Delo, once he gets rolling, it, it can be hard to slow down because he's able to do it, you know, off the ball, on the ball, you know, from beyond the arc, inside the arc, just just in a variety of ways. Totally. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Now, when it comes to – we're going to wrap this up because I know you, you got to go here in a few minutes. So I just want to, like, ask a couple more questions. And then, you know, we'll just say our goodbyes and, you know, hope the Magic continue to just whoop that ass tomorrow or tonight. <laughs> um, Kobe, from a – Just say Saturday. I'll make it easier for you. Saturday. Just Saturday. say Saturday. There you go. Thank you. You're helping me out here. Uh, professionalism right there, bro. That's how you, that's how you do it. You just say Saturday. Um, Kobe, for the Lakers to be successful and to end this matchup three and three, what is the, or sorry, four and four and two, not three and three, four and two. What is the key for them to contain the magic? I think they'll have to do a better job with, um, keeping the magic off the glass. I think that was an advantage that the magic had. In Monday's matchup, uh, I think the Magic had 12 offensive rebounds and more second chance points. I think it was close to 20 second chance points, maybe more than that. And, you know, at what the Magic finished with 103 points. So that's a significant amount of their offensive production. Um, you know, keeping them out of transition, keeping them off the offensive glass is easier said than done, especially since those are areas that the Lakers just have struggled in, you know, going back to last season. I think those are going to be the keys for the Lakers. So I'm curious to see, you know, depending on availability, um, Torian Prince didn't play against the Clippers because I think he had left knee soreness that flared up uh, during his pregame warmups. It, Gabe Vincent's not going to be available after playing against the Magic. You know, Jared Vanderbilt's going to continue to be out. So I wonder if we saw against the Clippers, the Lakers start, um, they use this front court of Jackson Hayes, Anthony Davis, and Christian Wood, just this, Super big <laughs> lineup that, yeah, that I'm sure like a lot of Magic fans want to see from, uh, want to see from their own group between you know, well, I know Wendell's at now, but you know, I know people want to see you know Ji Wendell and Paul on the floor at the same time. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we'll see that lineup again, depending on player availability, but just playing big, the the Lakers have had very uh, have had success with that, especially uh, when it comes to defensive rebounding. Uh, and just keeping it, you know, one shot and go uh, for defensively. So I'm, I'm curious to see how much they'll lean on that again, whether it's, like I said, the three big lineup or even, you know, more AD and uh, Christian Wood or more AD and Jackson Hayes, Jackson Hayes and Christian Wood. Just they've already used those lines before, but just lean more into it to um, to negate the Magic's, uh, Magic's strengths in, when it comes to, like I said, uh, transition offense and uh, offensive rebounding. Totally. That makes sense. Now let's flip the question, man, because you know this Magic team pretty well. You just covered them for, you know, over a season. Um, you know, they're not too far away from what you remember. And you just saw them versus the Lakers a few nights ago. What's it going to take for the Magic to come away being 4-2? and two Yeah, the, the same. Just the inverse of what I've just said. Uh, they'll have to, you know, it's going to be, they're going to be a different team just because Wendell being out, which will change things significantly. Right, totally. Um, I think the one thing for the Magic is keep the movement going. Uh, I, I think that's an area that, you know, offensively, keep it, keep the ball moving, keep the player movement going. Um, if there's one area that 
Um, you don't you don't want to get into a uh, a slow down sort of game with the Lakers from the Magic perspective, just sure. because if they do go bigger, you know they're going to they're going to close off a lot of passing lanes or driving lanes, and they 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 have the advantage, especially when you talk about. LeBron, D'Lo, Austin Reeves, just the ball handlers, or even AD. I think they have the advantage from the standpoint of, you know, slower pace game, methodical pace game. I, I would definitely say that, you know, for the Magic to win this game, they're going to have to be, you know, play quick but not fast. Don't go too fast. Don't be out of control, but be quick and intentional with every movement um, on and off the ball and keep the Lakers, you know, keep them on their toes. Don't let AD, you know, be close to the paint at all times. You know, don't let the length and size always be in, you know, toward the rim, trying to mix up the combinations or mix up where guys are on the floor. So you can kind of open things up a little bit, maybe from the sides and try to get, you know, you know attack the offense from that, uh, from that standpoint. That makes instead sense. of head on. I'm also just going to add taking and making open shots and, and hitting your free throws. <laughs> Those are a few yeah. things that, that, that this is just a theme for this magic team so far <laughs> to start the year. So we're just going to, we're going to keep that up too. You know, Let, let's let uh Gary Harris have another good night. Joe Ingles cook a little bit from, from there, you know, have, have some better shooting luck with Apollo and, and Franz from three, three and, and whatnot. So, so we'll see. Um, all right, Kobe, man, I really appreciate you having uh, taken a few minutes to, to join me on the show this today. Um, I am stoked for Magic fans to hear this on Saturday and uh, you you know, get, a, get a little game preview of the Magic versus the Lakers. One of these teams is going to be walking away four and two, which will be real fun. Um, man, even though it's not with or for the Magic, I'm going to let it slide this time because it is against a team that a lot of Magic fans don't like anyways, but we always love you. Can you tell everyone where they can find your new work? No, I appreciate the love. Uh, you can always find me on Twitter or X, whatever it's called. Whatever you want to call it these days, uh, still Kobe underscore Price, K-H-O-B-I underscore P-R-I-C-E on that app, website, etc. cetera. Um, Southern California News Group is my employer but you can follow actually follow you know my stories see my work on oc register la daily news all of these southern california news group uh newspapers so check me out i'm sure i'll be having a variety of stories throughout the weekend regarding lakers magic the day of the game or even and even after the game too that's what's up, man. Well, I'm psyched. I'm psyched. I'll definitely be checking out some of your work, recapping when you write about that L the Lakers just took on Saturday. <laughs> so, um, all right, man, I'm going to let you get it. Go enjoy Orlando while you're here for a little bit. It's your day off. Go have fun, and uh, we'll talk soon, man. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate you.